everybody, it's a friendly foe. So today we are playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I have not done this in a long time. I actually think I haven't done this in... You weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> I'll blur that out because that was his address. I'll shut up now. This would be a part three video. And I am so excited because I actually fixed it so you guys can... No, not mail. But to the point where you guys can see the files. Like characters, you know? I was told to keep these files open because I'll need it. But because I have so many gameplays going on and I'm going to try to finish them as fast as I can because people said it got really confusing, I'm going to start being, doing two days now in Doki Doki. So load game, Wednesday, yes. So this would be our second day because we depart more and part. This would be our third day. So I think we're going to go... Oh yes, people told me. Yuri... Natsuki Sayori. I got it, I got it. And a Monica. Or I could just, you know, look here. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go Sayori. Yes. I wanna do one out about all of them. I'm gonna go down the line. Next one is Natsuki. She likes Whirlwind. Oh, okay. So you're next then. Skipping. And then Natsuki. Unstable. Jumpy. No. Which one? Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna go her because she hates. Not her. You guys aren't gonna be able to know which one. I'm gonna go Natsuki because she's kind of mad at me now and I wanna get on a good side. I wanna be like good side with everybody. Peaceful. Oh, wait. No. Dang it. Okay. Raindrops. Oh my. I'm, I'm messing up. Messing up. Agonizing. Uh. Oh, did I tell you guys I stabbed myself with the knife? Sorry. <laughs> Nibble. There we go. Puppy. Or Rose. Oh, cute. There we go. Joy. Boop. 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 Fireworks. Oh, happy 4th of July, by the way. Poof. Bouncy. Holiday. Oh, wow. I don't even know. I don't even know these. Massacre. Jeez. Strawberry. Imagination. Scars. Oh, I have scars. I got bit by a dog once. Amazing! Death. Extraordinary. Doki Doki! <laughs> Happiness. I did. I think I got everybody in there, but it was mostly Sayori and Atsuki. Okay, I need to remember the controls. I think it's enter. You guys can probably see my hot bar. Hot bar. Let's see if it's recording. Is it recording? Yes, it's recording. <laughs> Jeez, guys. This is all new to me. I think it's enter. Another day passes and it's time for the club uh, for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable over here the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Anthony. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple, uh, the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a, why don't we look at your purse area? Oh, she's broke, I get it. Eh. Why that? Why that? All of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh, Sari nervously retrieves her coin purse. Coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and let its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. <laughs> oh, so she was asking him! I get it, I get it, it's all making sense now. I get it. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spend all your money so that I would lend you some. There we go. My hand's better at snapping. There we go. <laughs> but there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that leaves you, leaves the one option. Oh, uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty that 
No, if you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh, I, don't, I don't I don't know how to give him voices. Like, I just don't know. Like... Ah, uh, her- oh, her eyes look like the less than greater, uh, greater than sign. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. Oh, ah! Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. Crap, they're all the same voice! I was just something in my book. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna speak. I don't care anymore. Yuri, tell Anthony let me borrow some money. That's. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can be uh, can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling the mischievous little stunt like that, you're suffering is fair uh, enough retribution. Retribution? Ah, uh, did I just? I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Ugh. Ah, uh, I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun. But it's a fun side of you. That's. There's no way you can think that. You were right, though. I did. I did something bad, and that bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. 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 Which one? That was kind of loud. That still coming from you, Sayori? Oh, Yuri. <laughs> I guess there's the little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Eh. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys what she was. Br told you guys she was. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But but you w you wouldn't have come if you weren't for the for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh, jeez. Pop. Cap. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh no. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was? Eh? A cookie. Oh, I bet you Natsuki heard. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I pay my restitution, restitution, Retribu re retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ah ha ha ha! I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. Oh, okay. So I'm. I think I figured out the voices. I still figure out Monica's now. I said this last episode. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ah ha! That's Suki. That's. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sari hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sari rap rapidly tears open the uh, wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Wait, so good. Mm. Sari suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. E he he. <laughs> you you're going through a lot of over just that one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours look really. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I give you the, gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of an out of Natsuki's. Oh my god. You don't steal people's foods! When did my camera shut off? My camera's dead. I swear to god. I'll put, I'm trying it on back, guys. I'm, I'm putting it back on. There we go, freaking. Uh, sorry, guys. Sarah suddenly leans out. Uh, nah, too used to cookie. Hey, hey, did you seriously just do that? Mm -hmm. Mouthful. Sarah trots away to safety. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. 
Monica is in the club room. Ah, oh, where is Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Oh, that was her. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh, you don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Uh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super late. <laughs> that is so bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I just hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, I can't give her that voice. Eh? Monica, cho Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard the bell. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was pr practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. Oh, she probably does have a boyfriend. She's just lying about it to like make them feel better or something. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... that's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a bit, little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds so cool. Sounds cool. No, there's no someone there. I'd also... I'd, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I, I won't let you down, Anthony. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. My ear's ringing. It won't stop. Like, last night and the day before, this ear goes numb and it starts to ring. And it's so weird. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not not really. I choose I choose to leave Sari's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks, every, it looks like everyone has already settled down. Sari somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Poem time! Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening on, in on Sari's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna see really lame. We're gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual, but it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone, something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm, that doesn't solve the problem though. Uh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's about a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how we're going to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do this thing to speak to their, uh, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sari is talking, taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating about this delivering this huh that's a good point in that case do you think food will do the trick what kind uh, well I guess we could cupcakes haha uh -huh, good thinking Natsuki uh, Natsuki would love to do that ah you're right okay I'm really scared they're gonna come bursting and be like quiet down happened once already I say Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we need to still work out the details of the event itself. Okay. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sierra is still her usual self. 
But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sari can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, Jesus! Oh, what? I opened my eyes to find Sari's uh, face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Eee, sorry. Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like this. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up, uh, you're staying up late again, aren't you? I swear to God there's a ghost in this room. Now, now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? Jesus! <laughs> uh, you'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sari. <laughs> That's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, n not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sari, it's written all over you. Eh? Sari glances around at herself. How's this written all over me? You were clearly in the rush this morning. Look at your hair. It's sticking all around here. Okay, sorry. First time I noticed her hair. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Sari's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just... My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look at your bow. It isn't straight either. Is it? I never looked at their bows. I just know the characters' names and the voices. That's what I know. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Where? <laughs> I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. I didn't. So I think she's good. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Unfortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep a blaze your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you why don't why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, that was mean. Uh Anthony in this game is kind of like not the very friendliest. Eh? That's super mean! See? Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh no, oh no, I'm gonna have to like close the blinds. Oh god. Hee hee, this is so funny. What is it? Well, I was just thinking how weirders have a friend who does this kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy you were like this, aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might not come off. Why is this one so hard, so close? I sure will fully close near her chest. Do this thing even fit you properly? Eee. I did when I bought it. It did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever burned it, you would have noticed so sooner it doesn't fit you anymore. Wait, Trevor bought this game. If they come and yelling at me, I'll just be like, go to Trevor, talk about it. What are you smiling about? Oh, good. They're gonna come, like, the cops are gonna come busting in through the door. It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. Eee. Anyway, you look much better now, so, uh, why does it feel so strange to see blazers, Sari's blazer bind up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sari hastily unbinds her blazer once more. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gone. Okay, camera's still rolling. Oh my god, I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> that was so bad. Phew, that's so much better. Sari puts her arms down and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like it's such a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else anyway. So that's why I keep it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. <laughs> eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, try to focus. Just try to... Just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Eee. 
A, us are really better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, oh, but I was just stroking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone! Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Anthony, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel to sound ex I feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sari Sari still trots away to retrieve her poem. Oh my god, if I wrote about Sari this time, she would have like got it full on, like tackled me. Who should I show my per first? Monica Yuri Natsuki. We're gonna go Natsuki because I tried writing it about her. Hmm. Well, I can't admit it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Kind to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sari's poem from yesterday. Uh, you think so? Yeah, well, if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never re but you never really struck me as her type. Sari, Sari has this type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Uh, that's a little unnecessary, but think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably be, probably just fly away like letting, like letting go of a balloon. And you, and you could say that we take care of each other in ways of our own. What, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Okay. I'm gonna try to beat this game today. Let's just do it. Let's try to get this out of the way. If there can't be much days left, there probably is like five days like Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm the third one. We're just gonna finish it up. Amy likes spiders. You know what I've heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite song, favorite long love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. Both of her friends like start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not with not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she sleep, keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She is gross. The world has is better off without spider lovers and I'm gonna tell everyone oh that was that was like on bully level there <laughs> not bad right it's quite bit uh, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's yesterday's was way too short I was just warming up I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do no of course no of course not Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree with that subject of the poem as an ignorant jerk. Do you know do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or or guilty pleasure, something that you're afraid if people find out they make fun of you or, or think less of you. But that makes, but that makes, but that just makes people stupid. Who cares if someone likes as long as they're not hurting some anyone, and it makes them happy? I think people really, really need to learn respect for others liking weird things. Well, if you're well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that, and I'm sure a lot of people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't think I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but if I want to want to make people think, not just feel, remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Uh, oh yeah, do you like my shirt? Can you guys see it? It's like Ralph, and it says I double dog dare dare you. Yeah. Um, sorry, because we also kind of went to her side in the end. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so good, Anthony. Eh? I love it, especially after yesterday's poem. Uh? You're too honest sometimes, sorry. No, but really, I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sorry, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, 
Maybe that's why, because I have no idea what I like either. Ah ha ha ha! Yeah, it's recording. Geez, I'm sure Yuri's opinion, opinion has been more constructive than this. Maybe maybe even at Suki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of pe other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's an Anthony poem! And that makes me feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sari hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sari. Eee. Well, I'm not very good at figuring it out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel like feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh, why don't you at least uh, try giving it some thought? Aw, oh, you want to write a poem for me? Something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, you're right. But if you're always thinking about other people, you need to think about yourself once in a little while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and happy and sad? Sad? I can't see you like something sad, Sari. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help you get the rain cloud a little hug, and it makes a nice happy rainbow. Sari, that's an unexpectedly poetic. Eh, is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Anthony. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, the freaking, uh, the days are so long. People are saying it's gonna get good, but I don't know. Like, what happens? Does he hook up, like, Yuri and Sayori gets mad? Like, what happens? Don't tell me. Don't actually tell me. I want to figure it out, but it's just taking so long. Bottles. I pop off my scope like a little... I pop off my scalp like a lid of a cookie jar. Ugh. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundles of kitten. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger to pluck one out. It's warm and tingly? Like, imagine. Pluck! Warm and tingly kittens and butterflies. Ugh. But there's no time to waste. I put in a bottle to keep it safe. And when I put in the bottle on the and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes uh, me lots of friends. Each bottle is each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles, deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring in a dark cave, discovering the secret hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time to lapse. My empty shelf could do some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and come I can uncome my friends. In they come, such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's like a yeah, like holy crap, <laughs> holy crap, Sari, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that it's almost kind of creepy. Creepy. 
Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feeling a little bit uh, better. Writing is like magic. You got it pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is the best. Like air bubbles on my chest, jeez. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sari's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Wait. This one of the times that she's thinking about dying? Okay, okay, okay. I'm scared. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, yeah. You're right. Monica is always last. Like, Monica takes the longest she wants to go into depth and be like, ah, error, error, error. You didn't put the I in. You didn't put the I before the E. <laughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. This is pretty good, Anthony. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes, so I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. I see. That's a certain, certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. This is the poem you wrote for today. Yuri now intimidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. Happened in the dead of n night. Happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange intensities as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that, I could rac that a raccoon that is fed will always come back to you for more. Sorry, I'll have to end at 1.30. Um, it's, I have like 50 minutes left. Well, 40. Always come back for more. The enticing beauty of, of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon was raccoon and urge. The, yeah, the moon and his, his face and reflects that much that when I'm cutting a knife. It's very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon, raccoon friend. I flesh the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto Newly satisfied animal, the raccoon has taken to following me. You can say that we've gone quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Each time I banish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic proving it, mentioning I slice the bread and I feel and I and I feed myself again. A rush of blood? Ooh, oh, I thought that was gonna end like I accidentally sliced my finger, but I bet she was like a rush of blood from her heart because like she was so excited or something. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if this is my fault, but I can be, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that... Okay, is it still recording? Please be recording still. Yes. Really, in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Oh, that's funny. Did Natsuki also write something about that? Something about being re ridiculed for a strange interest. Eh, sh she did. Yeah, she was talking about how does it, how it doesn't matter what if you, in what you're into as long as it's not hurting anybody. She's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you two have that in common. Well, that's well, that's interesting to me. She seemed like the kind of person who would, 
make fun of my hobbies, but I suppose that's my fault for judging it, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Uh, last one on the day, boys. Well, I think we could do one more before I have to go. Yeah, day two. Hi again, Anthony. What? Okay, I hope that's nothing. What is that? Somebody tell me in the comments. What happened? What did I do wrong? Hi, Anthony. Have you thought about what you want to submit at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing. Performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. I'm going to look it up. No, I'll look it up after I'm done recording. No, I'm not gonna look it up. It's probably nothing. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm I'm sure it will turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ha. Huh? Okay, I'm looking this up. Okay, it's saying that it's nothing big. I don't know. I'm really scared. I like it, Anthony. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ha! <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something that Suki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. I'm scared now. Like, I don't know what to do. Is it gonna pop up? Did the computer crash? Like, when I'm done with this day, I think I'll just end it, upload it, and hopefully next time we get on, it's fixed. Ah, uh, if you say so. Like, something's behind me now. Yep, by any chance, have you read anything by, by Shel Silverstein? Eh, maybe a long time ago. He's a famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, enduring, or even sad, and sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might not, they might even like they're, they might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find uh, much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless catastrophe of meaningless noise. The noise, they won't stop. Violent and gratingly... Grading waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sign can sign tagnet, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing on a bin with a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? An endless poem of meaningless? Load me. Hmm. Even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I never really seen before, I guess. I guess I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like pet magic. The way I wrote the lines really sure makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ah, sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or conversation with the reader. Jesus, I feel really creeped out now. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a facing difficult, uh, difficult thing. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. What? 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 Don't forget. I got chills. I got chills. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Errors have popped up. She's telling me to save my game. Something. Load me? Her character file. No, I don't have an app to open it. Oh my god, okay, okay. I'm gonna get an app and we'll do this next time. 
Wait, but that doesn't make sense. Like, how would she? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's. Maybe she doesn't mean that. Hopefully, she doesn't mean that. Oh, wait, I need to say my game. You never know when you might change your mind. I'm done. I'm done. We might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this the tip about writing? What am I even talking about? Haha, <laughs> that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Get away from me. Who told me to play this game? Why? <laughs> it's okay. It's fun. I like this stuff. If like she if she starts breaking the fourth wall, I free that's why I love Deadpool, because he breaks the fourth wall. Fourth wall breaks. Get in games like that. <laughs> Request them at least. Okay, everyone, we're all about, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come and sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Festival? <laughs> well, uh, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well in the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We don't need, we won't need much more than just a few decorations. Sarah, you might be working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets, pamphlets, pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing. Performing? Um, Monica, yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to be letting someone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah is putting it all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hehehe. <laughs> Sarah, who's been coloring the poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't think, you didn't, you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask of them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But! I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start this event and put, uh, put on a good performance, then I might inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And if and those reasons that we're all in this club today, don't you want to share that with the others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. We all do. And if it takes and if it and if it takes is standing and if all it takes is standing in front of a room people for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sari looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sari and Monica, Sari and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any argument left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everybody else's expensive faces. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! The club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to be practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way! Monica, this is all too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Ha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebooks to the specific poem she has to mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. 
The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Then fly, the fly? I don't know. Okay, yeah, I have like 30, like 28 minutes left. I, we can finish this up. Ahem. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply the emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's been done before, or is it simply by natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sari looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica f- finishes her recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to get a, set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next! A what? Yuri's firing up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called, Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called, After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and a structure that she enucates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire. Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality, glances around her, as if she bewildered herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me after and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. That was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks the poem. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, uh-huh. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to the others. Imagine reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror. Oh, I didn't read that. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Yuri, Sayori begins a poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's sincere and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she says she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> Even Anthony liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely, but it might not be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh, I don't think I really don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that are sorry, that a sort of gentle and delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well. I've been practicing with that kind of thing. I just embarrass. I'm just. Em- it's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the f- festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? That Suki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Anthony. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Anthony. Might as well let Anthony lowers everyone's standards a little before I have to. Natsuki, it's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But that's not. But it's not like I've heard much of a sec- selection of what to read. I'll just go over what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. I'm sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. It's less... I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something we'll, that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. Then that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki barbarely sets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. <laughs> 
Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she started, while she's still a little unenthused, un un <laughs> her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. That's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when we've spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do, at least, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever I face. I can put whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you would have, you won't have much more worried about for the festival. I'm just, uh. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and you get enough practice to be for the festival. And making, and I'll be making pan flips, so let me know ahead of time of what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasant, pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this in a friend of the club. It makes me really happy. And yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It might be working out really nice so far, and I'd like to continue to this. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big deal. I can't wait. I can do this, I can do this, all right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sari and Monica, but I'll do my best as to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club I'm impressing and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sari? Yep. Oh, I got the voices switched around. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make it such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Anthony. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sari once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sari is a little quieter than unusual on the way home. Hey, Sari. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sari fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sari. I would still walk home with Sari, of course. Sari, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? Uh, but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides you, besides you always, you always seem to really like going home together. It wouldn't ruin that for you. You're so silly, Anthony. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it. So, Sayuri, I've already made up my mind. I can't really figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating? something that's never going to happen. Hmm? The conversation trails off. It's kind of weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen at that time. Ugh, we did it guys, we got through the day, but because I have to end early, we're only gonna do one day. So let's save. And turn. So let's just go over what happened today. Oh my god, that was so weird. Like, yeah, my camera started over. Why? Anyway, freaking, we got arrow codes. She broke the fourth wall by telling me to save my game. It just got weird today. Hopefully, it'll be better tomorrow so we get more, you know, excitements. Sorry. Oh, I'm so excited for like the next day. Oh yeah, and my new schedule. I'm gonna do games back to back so I can get them over. So tomorrow, you'll see Doki Doki Part 4, and it's that Fight 5, Part 6, Part 7, until it ends. Awesome, so thank you guys so much for watching. Good.
Bye.